uh, this is actually a, a friend of mine. He was living in Qatar. Uh, he's gone back to the UK now. So he he uh, he has a Quran teacher. He's also a good friend of mine. He's a sheikh here. So anyway, one day he asked him, look, uh, there's this uh, American revert couple, African-American in Doha, and they're having some issues. Um, and uh, the husband thinks that the wife may be possessed by a jinn. So can you go and just read Surah Baqarah? And uh, so my friend was reluctant, you know. But anyway, the sheikh said, look, I'm too busy. I need you to go. So he, he ended up going to this house um, uh, and, um, you know, the, the brother opened the door and then he entered. And um, basically, uh, he, he told him that, look, my wife's been acting a bit strangely, a bit bizarrely, has been aggressive. He gave kind of a, some, uh, some description. So uh, my friend said, look, okay, that's fine. Uh, bring me a mushaf. Um, when I start reciting, if there's any, you know, unusual behavior, you need to restrain your wife. Um, because I'm not allowed to touch her as a non mahram So he said, no problem, that's fine. So he started, uh, subhanAllah, reciting the Qur'an. Uh, and after a couple of minutes, uh, he started hearing this strange noise, um, like a hissing noise. Um, and so he looked up and he found that the sister, was she was like in an unnatural position, like sitting at, like this and like making this strange uh, hissing noise. Um, so he's like, he, he got a bit freaked out at this. Anyway, subhanAllah, he continued reciting. And then he started hearing a male voice, which he hadn't heard. Um, and it was in Arabic. So the, the other thing is these, this couple, they don't speak a word of Arabic. They, 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 only, they only know English. So um, he looked up and subhanAllah, the, the sister, she was speaking in a, in a male Arabic voice. Um, and my friend, he speaks Arabic, subhanAllah. So it ended up that there was, the jinn was speaking to my friend, right? Subhanallah. So now he's like, so he, the other thing is he's kind of sitting uh, against the wall and the door is on the other side. So he can't even like run away. You know, he's kind of stuck. So anyway, uh, he's, he continues to recite. And now this woman is basically trying to attack him and the husband is restraining her uh, because now the jinn is kind of, a, uh, is, is manifesting itself. Um, so he's like, Subhanallah, he's in his mind. He's like, I'm cursing the Sheikh. Why did he put me in this situation? But anyway, he continues reciting, and then after a little while, he hears another male voice in Arabic. So he looks <laughs> up, and he, subhanAllah, he notices that even the husband is possessed as well. Uh, so mm -hmm. now both the husband and wife are possessed by two male jinns, and, they, you know, he's like, it's stuck. And subhanAllah, you know, they became really aggressive. So he said that at one point, like, uh, the sister was trying to, like, attack him. So he, like, looked on the floor, and he found, like, you know, the, a broom, and he was, like, try, he was, like hitting her. Because she was trying to like attack him. And then the brother also was trying to attack him as well. Subhanallah. So he's like, I'm in one hand, I've got the mushaf. And I, in the other hand, I'm like trying to push them away. And he goes at one point, like the brother almost like overpowered him. So he, mashallah, he does Brazi uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu. So he's like, I just kind of threw a few punches in his ribs. And I like, ijlis. And he kicked him and the guy went flying across, <laughs> across the room. And he like so it fell on the floor. Uh, subhanallah so you know you just imagine putting yourself in that situation so anyway he then started conversing with the jinns and the jinn said look there's a magician um somewhere uh who's sent us to cause problems between this husband and wife um and we, we refuse to leave the body so there's a particular like uh methodology how to get rid of jinns uh, uh rukia so uh, he he continued reciting and obviously the quran burns them so they they started arguing with my friend to stop then eventually they uh, agreed to leave and they said, okay, we'll leave through the eye. And my friend said, no, you can't leave through the eye because you can damage it. So you need to leave through the feet, basically. So eventually uh, both of the, the jinns uh, left, but as they were leaving, they threatened him. They said, look, we're going to come and attack you. So just be, be careful, be mindful. And then they, they left. And then basically, subhanAllah, they, yeah, the brother and sister, they kind of came back to their senses and they had no memory of what, what had just happened, right? And the brother's like, oh, my ribs are hurting. What happened? <laughs> so my friend's like, look, mm. you, tried to, you tried to attack me. So I had to throw a few, few punches at you. SubhanAllah. Collateral damage. Collateral damage. Yeah, SubhanAllah. And then uh, basically my friend, he went back to sheikh, the sheikh and he said, look, don't put me in this situation again. Um, I mean, he was really affected by this. He, you know, he goes for the, for the following week. He couldn't sleep because he kept thinking maybe the jinns are going to like attack him. Uh, you know, because uh, he was on the front line. And this is something that you, when you speak to Raqis, I mean, the authentic Raqis, they actually uh, are, are fearful and mindful of this because, you know, even Tim mentions this, that 
they have to be extra careful because they're kind of uh, on the front lines fighting these dark forces um, and causing issues for them. So they have to be extra mindful. Uh, I, I don't know if Gabriel mentioned a story as well. I'll finish on this. So he mentioned that um, a 14-year-old girl once came to his clinic. You know, he does a, a kind of psychological counseling. Um, she was brought by, I think, her sister and her husband. And he said, anyway, he started speaking and trying to get a history. Um, and out of nowhere, this uh, this girl, she's 14, probably weighs around 60 kilograms. And mashallah, Gabriel's a big guy. Uh, he said that she basically jumped over the table and got him in a headlock. And uh, and like and and uh, basically took him on, onto the floor, and he's like he was shocked, he, and uh, the sister and her husband ran out of the room, <laughs> and he is like basically she was she was she she was she, she was choking him out, and Gabriel's like Subhanallah, I was like in shock, what, you know what the hell's going on here, and then he said I had to pull out some you know uh, BJJ moves and they basically take get, get her off me, uh, and uh, it transpired that this uh, this young girl was also affected by a jinn. Um, and you know, subhanAllah, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's really, uh, uh, eye opening. Mm. Have you ever had any like first, first hand encounters? Yeah, I have not personally, but I've been involved with, uh, with people who've, who've been affected by jinn. Yeah, I've witnessed it. Yes. Maybe mm. we can talk in, in future episodes about that. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I, yes, it's, it's something that, you know, people, again, you know, because we live in a secularized and atheistic kind of world, we we kind of uh, neglect these unseen forces, but it's very clear from our tradition, from the Quran and Sunnah, that this is real. The Prophet ﷺ, he himself was affected by magic, you know, mm. and that's why the Muhaddatayn Qul Audhu Rabbil Fun Qul Audhu Bin Nas was revealed, so that because it's a source of protection. Um, and yeah, sorry, I'm keep going on the last story. I promise, but this is I think your audience will really enjoy this. So Tim, he mentioned to me that um, he was in Saudi. And you know, subhanAllah, Adil, there's a, there's a department in Saudi. It's like a Ghostbusters department. Basically, they're responsible for catch it, catching magicians. Um, so there's a sheikh. He has military escort uh, and police. Um, and basically, people report, you know, um, individuals who are thought to be involved in black magic. So Tim told me that he was like working with one of these sheikhs. And they got a call that there was somebody um, who the community was, uh, was concerned was doing black magic and causing fitna in the community. So anyway, Tim said that we, like we, I left with the sheikh and there was like a, an escort. We ended up going to this guy's house and he, he heard the sirens. So he started running from the back door. So Tim said like, we're like the sheikh and me are like running after this guy. And he said, subhanAllah, he kind of, he kind of like leaned forward and his feet lifted off the ground. And he was like, almost like flying through the air. Um, you know, not like, mm. uh, uh, probably like about. I don't know, a, a meter or something off the ground. And he's literally mm. like, you know, flying to the air, subhanAllah. So, and he's, he said that we're chasing him, but he's kind of escaping. So then the, the sheikh said, look, we're not going to catch him. Let's jump in the, our GMCs and chase him. So anyway, as they're kind of chasing, imagine the guy's like literally flying and the, <laughs> the, the, the sheikh and Tim and the police guys are like chasing him in like two or three GMCs. Right. And then uh, Tim said that the sheikh remembered he forgot to do his askar. I think his morning askar. So he started making the askar. And when he finished reciting Ayat al Kursi, Tim said literally the guy kind of fell and he was like a fidget spinner. He spun through the, through the sand, right? And they, they apprehended him. Mm. Uh, and when they questioned him, he, he said, Look, there were two jinns. They were helping me escape. They were lifting me and they were uh, taking me away. But when you recited Ayat al-Kursi, they couldn't handle it. It was so powerful that they dropped me and ran off. And then the, that, in, that individual was, uh, was executed. Because, you know, from the Sharia, even mm. if uh, a magician repents, he's, the order is still to be, for him to be executed because of the, the fitna that he causes in society. Um, so although this sounds like, you know, like a Marvel type movie, subhanAllah, it's actually real. It happens. But um, we, we get affected by, you know, our environment and we kind of don't believe in this stuff but mm. uh, it, it's it is it is really uh something that to, we need to be vigilant about and you know protect ourselves and our families from these uh, mm. evil dark forces 